Welcome back. I have another set of utilities this time. Utilities is a strong term. So I know a lot of you are going to recognize this. Kid picks. And I have three of them. See, there wasn't just one kid picks, there were a few. And each one of them was this ridiculous color of green. But other than that, they were substantially different. Except in the ways they were very much the same. I've previewed these a little bit, but uh, I want to go ahead and install all three of them and see what they're like side by side. So let's get to it. Remember, this is my Pentium machine, and this is my Pentium 3 machine down here where you can't see it. So I'm going to reach up here and hit this button all the time, and it's not going to open because this computer is not on. It's just a monitor stand. So I think we're starting with KidPix Studio. I believe that's the oldest. This is old enough it doesn't even have an auto run. I think this is for Windows 3.1. Oh, that's got to be for Windows 3.1. All right, here we go. Uh, I actually am going to honor its request. Oh, wow. Okay, that looks bad. All right, so KidPix Studio is basically the original KidPix, but with the addition of a few other modes. So we've got the original KidPix, and I, I could be wrong. I don't have the whole lineage, but I think this is the original KidPix, the first one that was released. And there's a slideshow, a digital puppets, the Stampimator, Moopies, and Wacky TV, all of which are sort of riffs on the same kind of other tool. But uh, we'll just get into it and I'll show you. So we're going to start with KidPix. Paint a picture. Now, if you're not familiar with KidPix, uh, basically the idea is this is a paint program with some basic tools that you could use to draw pictures, I suppose. But mostly, it's just a whole crap load of really fun ways to weird up an image. So you've got your basic tool, which is a pencil. Okay, and you've got a paintbrush, which already you can see is doing things a little weird. Let me see if I can change how big the paintbrush is. I don't think I can. No. But basically, you can see already the paintbrush doesn't really do things the way you'd expect. It's it's kind of making these huge blobs that change size depending on, on how fast the, the mouse moves, I think. We've also got uh, shape control to do our basic, you know, squares, circles, lines. Uh, we've got a paint bucket. And all of these can use patterns. So you can fill with that um, or you could fill with uh, a randomly selected pattern if you want. And uh, it even does color patterns, so we can uh, we can fill with this, for instance, which is a pretty fancy pattern. So this beats the heck out of MS Paint for playing around. You know, as a kid, just those tools alone would be a lot more fun than just an ordinary paint program. But it goes way deeper than that. So we want to erase this image. So let's go pick the eraser. But you'll notice, while we can just erase, and you'll notice there's a cute sound effect there, which is a big thing with kid picks. You know, every single tool has a sound effect. Yeah, that's cute. But, but, down here at the bottom is sort of where the magic happens. Every one of these is a different way to erase the screen. So that dynamites it. And then, let's get some more stuff on the screen. And then we've got this one here. That one sort of bubbles it away, but they get wackier. So this one here, this one here fills the page with text as long as you hold the button down. And then when you let go, it erases the whole screen. Of course, my question is, can I keep the text? I don't know if there's an option for that. Okay, here's some more. That one's neat. And then uh, this one. That's cool, it does a sort of uh, dithering effect. And then this one. Okay, but here's the weirdest one. I have no idea why he uses these double arrows. I can't get over this. I feel like I'm playing who wants to be the guy, like, this is a shit post. This feels like a shit post. Oh, there's a different face. I've never seen the different face before. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Hmm. Why did it print the date? 
I have no idea. And that's the thing about kid pics. That's why it's so fun. It does weird shit. It's not just that it's colorful and cartoony and has sound effects. There's stuff in here that makes no sense. Why did it print the date? It doesn't save the date. They had to write special code to make it put the date on the screen and scroll it. Why did it print the date to erase the screen? Why? Because it's hilarious. It makes me laugh and I'm 28. When you were nine, this was probably a complete knee slapper. All right, let me just show you the last couple. Yeah, that one's not too exciting. And then, uh, random. Oh, whoa. Oh no, what's going on? There's an image back there. I've never tried this before. What? What's Benjamin Franklin doing here? That's not an erase at all. It didn't erase. I, I have no explanation for this. Okay, um, well... Oh, wait. Oh, there's a new image now. It's time-based, I guess, because I waited a bit. And now it's doing a new image when I erase. But if I just immediately do it again, it doesn't change. Or maybe it does. Nope, nope, same image. Same. What if I click it again? That changes it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why we're erasing to that. There you go. That's kid pics. I don't need to show you any more. You've seen all you need to see, but let's press on. We've got this here, the blender. And what the blender does is it fucks the image up. So these ones are real basic. These just rotate it. But like this one, just put spider webs all over it. It's Halloween, so that's appropriate. Let's add some more. Oh, it only does them in gray. Oh, but there's some spiders. Okay, this one. Uh, it doesn't invert the colors. It cycles them. And it seems to be cycling them non-linearly, so I don't think I can return to where I started. Okay. That one... Ooh, this one adds wavies to the image. Here, uh, let me put some more... Some more stuff on here so you can see what it's doing. Whoop. And if you do it again... If you do it again... Then we've got this one here, and what this does is... Let's put some more... Let's get some more crap on the screen here. Let's do some bubbles. Do some bright colored bubbles. There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, this one here sort of copies the image, shrinks it, and then pastes it all over itself. Uh, that one seems to just turn it black and white. I didn't want to do that. That's destroyed a lot of my image information. So now I get to show you the best feature in KidPix, the undo guy. Here he is. There's a lot of sound effects in here. In the later kid pixes, there are more. Okay, let's do a few more things. Uh, so real quick, we've got this here, which just sort of rearranges the image with a grid, and it leaves the grid. This one melts the image, that's cool. Uh, this one uh, copies the image around a central point. So that's interesting. This one sort of, uh, this one sort of degrades the image in sections eventually resulting in total black. By the way, if any of you here are older computer users or modern hackers or whatever, uh, you might be familiar with the term screen hack. This is basically a program full of screen hacks. These are all cute little routines that the developers at Broderbund came up with that they decided to throw into this program. It's pretty neat. This one distorts the image, performs the sinusoidal transform in two directions at once. You can get some interesting effects from that, as you can see. It's resulting in some weird kind of moiré. Okay, and then this one is basically stretching the image horizontally. Yeah, it looks like it's just performing a stretch over and over. Oh, and actually, yeah, if you, if you don't stop, then it gets slower and slower and slower. But if you stop and restart, then it speeds up again. And that's probably because it's saving the image it's working on and performing... Uh, more and more and more processor intensive stretch operations whereas if you stop and restart then it's only working with the smaller image again okay what else we got oh well, that's cute bubbles I don't want those I don't want those oh that's cool oops 
Whoa! Okay, moving the mouse around left to right, you get different effects at this one. Let's see if I can load a pre-made image so that you can see what this looks like. Here we go. Oh! That's basically just a whole bunch of stacked uh, XORD random three-point polygons. Again, a pretty cute screen hack. This just copies the image and overlays it on itself wherever you like. This is a combination of an edge detect and a color invert, it looks like. That adds a moiré, like the... Um, you know when Windows 95 or 98 would dim the screen when you went to the shutdown and it did it by just overlaying a mosaic of one on, one off pixels all over the screen? That's what this is doing. So if we do it again, ooh, that's interesting. We got uh, this uh, horizontal, or we got this diagonal line effect. I'm not sure what caused that. And if we repeat, it continues to fuck the screen up. I don't know how it's doing that. Oh, I see. It's not always just a one-on, one-off matrix. It's Oops. other patterns as well. Oops. They look like some of the standard Windows ones. In fact, they all look like the standard Windows ones. Okay. That one scrolls the image horizontally. That's weird. It just puts these little symbols all over. I don't know what those are. All right, so then we've got, uh, we have text. And you'd think the text would be a text box, but it's not. It's, it's just letters. And uh, intriguingly, in this version, you can't change the size of them as far as I can tell. You can just change the color. So then we've got this one. Ah, okay, sorry. This one is an ordinary text box. And can we change font? Yep, yeah, we can change font on the fly. And I feel like none of these are fonts that came with Windows, certainly at, at the time. I think this would have been Windows 3.1 as well. I, I don't think it included any of these. So that seems to be all there is to the text tool. Then we have the uh, stamp tool. That basically lets you put images from a predetermined library of stamps that comes with the program. You can't change size on them or anything like that. This is the truck, which is basically a copy and paste, or a cut and paste in this case. Uh -oh. So this, instead of giving you a bounding box you can drag around. It just gives you predetermined sizes. There's this magnet here. Let's see what that is. Ah, that's the one that lets you do arbitrarily shaped and sized rectangles. And we have a color picker, and that's about it. In the menus here, we do have options to uh, change uh, the language to Spanish. We can turn all the sounds off. Alphabet text is interesting. I, I don't actually know what that does. And under here, we can pick a different stamp set. So it comes with different sets of stamps. Although it seems like they're all loaded since I've seen stuff from several of these. Uh, pick hidden pictures. I'm not sure what these do either. If I select one, it doesn't seem to do anything. Oh, also, I just discovered this fun tool. On the pencil, if you pick the random option, it lets you draw in rainbows. Wonderfully gay. So then we have a draw me, a color me, a movie, and record sound. I don't have a microphone, but I'll do a draw me, whatever that is. Draw me. Wow, uh, I guess this is giving me a goal. Alright, I've done as they requested. Do I get anything for it? I save that in the Windows directory. Oh, this program's too old to support long file names. It is for Win31. Uh, pick a color me, I'm guessing, is just a color and image. Egg. Oh, there's music. Oh, okay, it's just one sound effect. Alright, so that's as much as you would expect. Alright, so we also have Wacky TV. And we're going to load a video here. It comes with a bunch of videos. It's mousy. Oh, look at this boy. All right, so this is sort of a weird program. It's kind of strange. It doesn't do a lot. So we can play, uh, we can step forward one frame at a time. 
we can just rewind it. Uh, we turn the audio on and off if there was audio. But then what's more interesting about this is you hit down here, you've got options for modifying the video. So if we hit this, then it does this weird uh, sort of offsets it inverts the colors. Um, if we hit this one, it just magnifies it, but also sort of messes it up at the same time. Uh, this one here, um, I'm not sure what it does. Does it do anything? No, I think this just means do nothing. Uh, this just makes it go fast. Uh, this puts image circles all over the screen, random polygons, um, inverted line here, a checkerboard, and then we can oh no it. And um, oh, I guess this one makes it go in reverse. Okay, but that's it. That's that's all it does. It's I don't even think you can save the video. Nope. Yeah. So that's it. All right, so then it's slideshow. Like with pictures and movies. I'm guessing this is exactly what it looks like, just for chaining together images and making a slideshow. That's it. Yeah, so nothing really interesting there. Oh, you can save an AVI or, or a standalone, which is presumably just an executable. Yep, standalone player. So you can see we've tried two of the other accessories, and they didn't weren't really much to write home about. All right, moopies. Use your wacky brush to make a moving picture. Now this one, this one rocks. This is blingy. So we've got the Windows logo, and then we've got the normal KidPix tools, right? So we draw all over it, and then the lines dance. Uh, the uh, circle and square tools don't do anything interesting. Uh, the line doesn't do anything interesting. Uh, but the paintbrush now has a completely new set of options available for it. So this one here creates these sort of flashing bubbles. Uh, this one here is fun. These dance all over the place. This one is super cool. Look at this. It's a sort of uh, pseudo 3D. And then after you release it, it kind of dances. And you can color them too, so these polygons get shaded. All right, so then we've got this. So I'm just going to go through the rest of these. This is one of my favorites, and I need to clear the screen so you can actually see what it does. It just makes it rain. But it makes it rain in a shape. So there's all that, but then we have modified versions of a bunch of the other tools. So, for instance, the alphabet is now animated, and all the letters are different styles and fonts. That's nice and obnoxious. Then the stamp tool, everything that's in here is now animated. I'm a big fan of three-part Gator. He's extremely good. What's interesting about this is that you can perform a cut and paste operation, and it will actually honor the animation. So if we cut and copy this over here, it actually continues to animate. I'm not sure how that works behind the scenes. And then finally, there are new Blender options that, as far as I can tell, actually take place in real time. Oh, no. Yeah, see that one, for instance, it's blending it every frame. What happens if we stack these, I wonder? Oh, it works. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, yeah. Oh, extremely good. Yes, very, very good. Oh, and then we've got a modifier here that just stops the whole thing. We can spit on a Moopy file, which is obviously internal. Uh, we can save as a slideshow, we can save as a standalone, but we can't save an AVI, which I'm kind of surprised by. However, we could shoot it out to a slideshow. 
Oh no, there we go. It becomes a slideshow file. Perfect. So then I can show that to you in full resolution in the video and you can see what it looks like. Uh, we can pick a background, which presumably is, everything's going to draw on top of even if I pick it now. Let's see if that's true. Oh, let's pick this great bird. Yes, vulture, excellent. Nope, that's gonna erase the whole thing. That's fine though, because see now we can completely fire up this bird. Phone's ringing off the hook because this dude's popular, but mostly uh, dude just needs fire. Hell yeah. I'm telling you, this is blingy. I'm telling you, this is blingy. It's just not as ridiculous. I'm telling you, this is blingy. Alright, so that's a much better tool than the other two. Let's look at the stamp emitter. This one's a little weird. You get to select up to four stamps. The stamps are not in themselves animated, but this bar up here represents the animation timeline. And when you click and drag, you are recording an animation. So you can do up to four of these, so we can put this guy in here. Oh, so some of them are animated. Oh, they are all, they're all animated. Okay, I, I don't know how I missed that at first, but yes, the squirrel is doing his thing. So that's it. Um, you know, that's pretty much all it does. Uh, you can draw behind them, but you don't get the animation effects that you get over in the other app. And otherwise, uh, all the other tools pretty much work the same. This just replaced, this is basically kid picks with the stamp tool replaced with this weird stamp tool. Oh, you can change the animation type, uh, but it doesn't do what you'd think. Uh, what it does instead is like this one here causes the character to move in a circle around wherever you drug your cursor. So like if I do that, then he moves in that circle. If I do that, he moves in that circle. Uh, this one here, I'm not sure what to think of that one. I don't really know how that works. You'd think that these would be ease in, ease out, but they don't really seem to be. It's more like, it's more like sort of a pre-made animation you can choose. See this one, I can't get him to go up. He just falls down right away. So I guess that's just sort of a, a gravity effect. So I don't know what to think of this. Oh, and then uh, you've got modifiers up here. So this one causes the animation to go forward and then reverse repeatedly. Uh, this one here causes him to uh, mirror horizontally when he reaches the end of his travel and repeats. And then, I don't know what helicopter does. And then of course, much like the other one, we can uh, save this as a slideshow. Finally, digital puppets. To make the puppet move. So when you press different letters, it does things. And it's recording them. And then when we're done, it'll play them back. Uh, you can pick a puppet, and there aren't a lot of them. Oh boy. Whoa! This is a really weird... Oh! Oh no! Don't do that! That terrifying uh, bee Klebon mouth. <laughs> and now we can export that as an AVI. Alright, and that's Kid Pick Studio. Not really much of an improvement over the original Kid Picks. I guess they just needed something else to release. So let's move on to Kid Picks Deluxe. For this next one, I'm going to switch it back to 32 bit color. This is actually, this disc's actually dirty. That's weird because the strange thing is, you'd think that most of the CDs I get from thrift stores would be in absolutely terrible condition, but no, the vast majority of them, almost every single one I've ever gotten has been in phenomenal condition, just perfectly clean. See like here, I have not cleaned up Kid Pick Studio, and here's what it looks like. Like there's a little bit of dust, Couple of little tiny scratches out near the edge, but they're in the right direction. And of course it installed perfectly. So yeah, people just, they take better care of their discs than you'd think. Even CDs that are intended for small children, you know, you'd think they'd get beat up, but they just don't seem to. So the previous one was 15 megs, this is 32 megs. There we go. 
still wants 256. Intriguingly, the previous one suggested I use 256. This one says I have to. Okay, so this is still Kid Pick's studio. It looks a little different. Paint a picture. They changed the sound clips. This largely looks the same. Let's see if there's any new fills. Those look the same. Okay, and I just realized I forgot to demo most of the paintbrush options in the previous version. So uh, rather than go back and demonstrate all those, um, I just want to know whether there's been any added. And I doubt there have been. So let's look at the very last one, which is the rainbow. Nope, looks like it's the same set of painting tools. Just to demo some of those. There's that tool. Oh, oh, that one's fun. Well, that's neat. It sort of draws the solid and a dithered brush at once. A really bad airbrush. Whoa. Now that's that's not really even a paint tool. That's more like the mixer. Same with that one. It just messes up wherever you draw it. Oh, that's cool. It draws a... Oh, that's neat. Do some really cool art with that. Oh, now this tool is super cool. Let me show you this. This is sort of the laser tool. And if you you click and then sort of pick a direction to throw it in. It's kind of hard to get it right. But it whatever direction you're moving the mouse when you click the button, it'll follow it. And depending on how fast you're moving, you either get a slow laser or a really fast one or an even faster one. We've got another one of these. <laughs> no! I'm the cops! This is interesting. It's sort of drawing according to a grid. This just puts a arbitrarily sized rainbow on the page. Also very gay. <gasps> oh my god. An arbitrarily paneled door. Oh, and the drawing code's real glitchy. All right, so that's it for the paint tool. Uh, let's see. No new erase. Nothing new in the blender. Nothing new in the text. This is new. You can uh, select whatever font you like. So everything's largely the same. This looks like just a tiny iteration. This all looks the same. This is mostly the same. But it looks like they did add text to speech. Yeah, the lang med. Yeah, so nothing really exciting there. I think we could probably guess that the rest of it probably hasn't changed much either. I mean, this all looks... It's all the same tools. It probably hasn't changed much. Yeah, this is all the same stuff. Okay, so that's actually what I expected, because uh, both of those are versions of Kid Picks that I've never heard anyone talk about. It's Kid Picks 3 that really put it on the map. Now, I don't have a copy of Kid Picks 3, but what I do have is a copy of Clue Finder's 6th Great Adventures Empire of the Plant People, a terrible game, which includes, for free, Kid Picks 3. Really, it should have gone the other way around. Now, I don't know what the copyright date on this is, but it's much newer, and it actually does require true color. By the way, fun note. I tried to do this video for you several months ago, but when I was all done, I checked and found that when I switched to 256 colors, uh, it screwed up the output refresh rate, and I lost the entire video because I forgot to check to see if I was actually recording. I was just getting black screen the whole time. But this time, I remembered to check after the fact. You see, this one's gotten much larger, 330 megs. Well, I don't know what the hell's going on, but this thing has been installing forever. There must be a filthy disk. Oh, wow. Uh, huh. This disk is trashed. That's weird. It worked fine before. All right, I cleaned the disk, put it back in. Let's see if it works any better now. All right, well, I'm not sure if this is going to work. So I'm going to let that chug away and then I'll come back and see in a while if it's gone anywhere. Well, after a lot of scrubbing, I was finally able to get the disc clean. I mean a lot of scrubbing. I had to scrub this disc a lot to get it working. Let's just kill that. Here we go again now. Yay! 
All right, so this one is completely revamped and reinvented. Totally new program. As you can see, this is listed as Kid Picks Deluxe 3 version 1. So here we are, it's a completely new interface. Uh, everything's been changed and moved around. Uh, it's been rendered in 3D. Uh, it's not even the same stuff. The tools have been changed and everything. So first off, we have the pencil. Does what you'd think. Uh, and then you can also pick a line mode for it, which is still technically the pencil. Uh, we also have arcs, which didn't exist before, and a pretty neat way of doing it too. Uh, the pencil also gives us the shape tools, uh, and from that we get a polygon tool, which was not in the previous version. And then of course we can pick uh, different sizes. Okay, but now we have chalk, and that actually produces a, a sort of convincing chalk. I think we can do, yep, we can do a, a filled rectangle of chalk as well, and it actually performs strokes to fill it. So it's not just a continuous field, it actually sort of looks like someone drew it. So then we have the uh, crayon, which does what you'd expect. Looks pretty crayony. And um, if we want to select different color, we now have this color palette down here, which is more convenient than the old one. And the colors kind of blend, but not really. And then we've got a magic marker. Which, again, sort of blends, sort of doesn't. Okay, so now let's move on from the pencil to the brush. All right, so things are, again, completely different than they used to be. So let's start out with this. Now this is actually a pretty convincing paintbrush. It's not uh, silly like the old one. And we've got several different types here. What's interesting is that this is a true paint program now. As you can see, the colors are actually blending. Uh, this one here uh, probably is just piling up really dense paint. Uh, that's sort of a fur tool. One there. These ones don't do the paint simulation. They're just um, they're just fun. So this is more the traditional kind of kid picks, uh, just fun things to play with. Not something you necessarily make a picture with. These are where the funky old kid picks tools are. You can see this one's obviously the polygon that we know and love. They've upgraded the paint drips tool a lot. This one's actually animated. And then this is new. It didn't exist before at all. You can apply as much or as little of this effect as you want. Uh, this is the old polygon tool. And it basically makes new steps in the polygon at intervals. Just a little more precise than the old one. Uh, we've got this here. And that's just sort of a spinning triangle. This one's kind of interesting because it's a uses a sort of an algorithm to produce its results. See, you put this dust out here and then it spreads out and then settles. That's the scribble tool from before. Okay, these all existed before. Uh, this just scales an image onto the screen, it looks like, although it might be vector, I'm not certain. Here's our funky door tool. That hasn't really changed much. The rainbow drawer is a little less exciting than it used to be. I actually liked the previous version, which was drawing a bunch of parallel lines instead of just a bitmap. One thing has changed is you can change the actual size of the objects you're laying down, so we can choose a large or a small polygon, or we can lay down some really big paint drips or some real tiny ones. So there's this tool here, and I'm frankly not really sure what this does. I haven't been able to figure out how it works. No matter what I do, it doesn't seem to put much on the screen. However, I notice it has a microphone icon, which suggests to me this is supposed to take audio input and react to that. Let me, um, do I have a microphone of any kind? I've plugged a couple mics into this and tried yelling into them, and I can't seem to get it to do anything. Maybe we'll read the help file. Your picture using your voice. Okay, so it seems to be driven off the sound card, but I can't get it to work, so I need the spray can, which basically just allows you to stamp all over the image, except that they've got newer, more interesting stamps, or maybe weirder and more disturbing if you want to say that. Like, these are really big bugs. We also have some fake candies, choco bar, eggs, ball. Now, then we have something particularly fun the animated stamps.
These don't animate once they're on the screen, obviously, but they're just cute to watch come in. And then we have the paint bucket. Now, this has changed, so let's erase everything. So the paint bucket lays down these really cool looking grayscale images. Uh, I absolutely adore them. Every one of them is a pretty good pattern. And of course you can pick whatever color you want for them. Then we have the gradient paint bucket which lays down gradients. Now this will respect the size of whatever you're gradienting into. See, it's, it'll fit the gradient into whatever you're pouring it into. And as usual, you still can only undo one step, but this seems like a good moment to talk about the undo guy who has changed in this version. He now has a fully animated three-dimensional face and a lot more sounds. Let's begin to undo. Oh man. Oh no. Wait a minute. Made up boo boo, yeah. Now wait a minute. No way. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, man. Oh, no. Uh oh. Oops. No, no, no. No way. Yeah. My bad. Undo, undo. Uh oh. No way. Uh uh. Whoops. Who don't want it? Uh uh. Uh uh. I've made up boo boo. There's even more in there than that, but that's my favorite, so we'll stop on that note. But finally, for the paint bucket, we have uh, actual image fills, and these are pretty good. Let's clear the screen again. These are basically all Lisa Frank uh, notebook covers. You know, all airbrushy kind of stuff. Pretty good, though. Like, I don't know, that's a, that's a great wallpaper, in fact. I think I want that for my desktop PC. This one's great. Ugh. Gross. Yeah, so there's a bunch of nice tiling bitmaps in here. So then, we got the fucker upper. So let's see what we got. That's new. Didn't get much out of that one. Alright, now, this is new. We can fuck the image up like this. My favorite part is how the edges don't just stay straight, they get distorted in this weird sort of painterly way. So my favorite thing about this app is that it has strange scaling artifacts, so a lot of the effects that cause adjustments of the, you know, distortions to the image will result in these very strange sort of ragged edges. They look a lot better than what you get from, you know, paint.net's built-in filters and whatnot. Ooh, that one's good. That one's also good. And of course that, wow, that completely destroys the image. I love it. Oh, can we adjust the intensity? Oh, we can. Oh, I didn't even know that. Oh, uh, we can just trash it real good. Okay, and then we've got this tool here, which allows us to fuck the image up live. That one actually converts it into like a pencil drawing style, but only where you, only where you write on it. Oh, well, that's weird. That, when you let go of that, it just causes strange effects to the rest of the image. Oh, I see. Oh, that's okay. So there's actually there's a bug in how those tools are implemented, it looks like. They're only supposed to affect where you drew, but they seem to do a color replace all over the image instead. Okay, then we have the stamp tool. That works exactly like before. Nothing, nothing unusual there. Except that there's an editor, so you can make your own stamps. Uh, and then uh, we've got a text tool. That works much like before, except this has the built-in uh, text-to-speech. Which, of course, is, you know, as obnoxious as it always has been. Studio. And then we have this tool, which allows you to move around the few objects that the program believes in, which is basically, I think, just it's text. I'm not sure what else. And then we've got the uh, cut tool, which does what you think it would. Plus it's got these predetermined shapes. We've got the dynamite. We have a wipe. We have a 
heart. Okay, let's see if it gets wacky. Oh, here we go. Whoa! The uh, machine doesn't quite have enough horsepower for that one. Same for that one. It's a bit much for this Pentium 3. I don't know, maybe they're supposed to render that slow. Alright, so then we have options up here for different scenes we can start with. Uh, so we have the uh, the music room. Well, we can go to things we can color in. We have extreme. Yeah. Family tree. Fantasy. Yes, excellent. Then we've got characters we can put in here. Put this Dillo in here. And then what's great about this is we can we can scale the Dillo because these appear to be uh, Windows meta files or some other type of uh, vector art format. So instead of just being static bitmaps, uh, we can we can fuck these ones up good. Uh, we've got the alphabet, much as we did before. Although uh, there's a bug with the UI where they disappear once you drag them out of here. But the difference is that those, uh, when you press this play button, will animate. Yep, that's it. And then finally we have uh, sound effects here. And that pretty much just provides a soundtrack when you hit play. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we make a new image. Uh, we can uh, print what we've got. And then there's the uh, slideshow maker. Yep, here we are, the slideshow maker. And that's pretty much it. So that's Kid Picks. So this program is absolutely beloved by a tremendous number of people I know, and as you can see, each of the versions of it had a lot to offer. I mean, if you were a young kid, or probably even like maybe an older kid, uh, I can imagine this would have been a tremendous amount of fun. I mean, compared to almost anything else you could do with you know Windows software at the time. You know, the Encarta, or the thing this was actually supposed to be, Clue Finder's Sixth Grade Adventures, was most of the time just more condescending than it was entertaining and uh, something like this allows you to actually get creative and what of course that really meant was making gigantic armadillos and then putting shitloads of fires around them to animate anyway i've been meaning to do a kid picks roundup for a while so yeah there you go that's a tour of kid picks i think that every kid should have kid picks i think everyone should have kid picks forever but certainly every kid should have kid picks i didn't have it growing up i had other weirder stuff but I uh, never had kid picks, and everybody else I know seemed to have had it when they were growing up, and they all seemed to love it. Uh, video games, the internet at large, of all the things you can give a kid to play with on the computer, something that allows them to actually make something that's their own, really seems like the best option if they're into it. And this really makes it easy for anyone to be into it. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Hope you had fun. Take it easy.